Hello and welcome to another video of basic fishing. Now most people know that I have showcased a lot of surf casting tutorial videos, whether it was targeting specific species of fish from the shore or showing which rig is suitable for surf casting. I hope you all enjoyed it. But for this video, I will be showcasing some basic tips and tricks on how to cast a surf casting reel and also include some good hacks on how to reach further distance. Hope this will help some anglers out there who are struggling and hope you learn a thing or two on how to cast a rod properly and how to achieve further casts. Hey everyone and welcome to my first ever ad video. If anyone is interested in getting the same rod I have been showcasing, my sponsor Bowser has good news for everyone who are keen. If anyone is keen on getting either the 71 North Surf Rod with a Tidex Surf Casting Reel or the Magna Nordic Neo Surf Casting Rod with the Tidex Reel, use this code to get an exclusive 20% discount off your first purchase on either of these two rods showcased. This won't last long so make sure to get them before this bonus expires. Links of the products and the code will all be available in the description below. Hope you all enjoy! So let's begin on how to cast with a surf casting rod. Now for most people, especially beginners, they would prefer to start off with a budget rod and reel and to be honest, it is more realistic. It's when you upgrade your gear that you really need to select the correct gear that will last you for a very long time and also a gear that you will be comfortable with for a long time. This Bowser surf casting combo I had showcased in many of my videos now is a great example of a good surf casting rod that will allow you to give you a great casting distance. The rod is around 14 feet long, give or take, and has good stiffness to it, so it's a great rod for casting out far. The rod is rated up to 7 ounces, but a 5 ounce sinker is the perfect weight for the cast. The K guides are also designed to counter tangle problems with braid as well. And the guides don't rust that easily which is even better. The rod is also not only strong but super lightweight which makes it carrying it so much easier. Whether you are waiting for a fish to bite on the rod or if you are carrying it to your spot. But the rod will only get you so far and now the next equipment we need is the appropriate reel to match with the rod. Now the Tidek reel is a proper surf casting reel as one, it has a long spool and two, the spool is tapered. A taped spool basically allows the line to fly off the reel without much resistance so therefore it is ideal for long distance casting. The sole oscillation system is also a good indication on a good surf casting reel as it means that the lines are more evenly layered and when the line flies off, it will fly off much more smoothly. The reel also has a drag capacity of 15 kilos, so it's perfect if you're fishing in an area where you may encounter the big fish, whether it is a good or the bad. Now, for the casting, it's called the overhead cast. This form of casting is very basic, but it does the job perfectly well as you would have seen in many of my videos. Now here is a good demonstration on how to do this cast and I'll mention some good key elements for you viewers to be aware of when you're applying this cast. Step number one is to hold your rod correctly when you're casting and that is from the real end, not real seat, to the rod butt. By having this much gap, you're able to generate a lot of power without feeling too awkward. And that is the key because if you feel uncomfortable when you're casting, you're not going to get far. Not to mention, you get terrible accuracy or worse, you might risk hitting someone, which is not ideal. Now step number two is that when I'm preparing for casting, I make sure that my sinker is either lined up with either the first or the second guy like that length is just enough and the reason why you want that much um, gap between the rod tip and the sinker is that 
by having this much gap, you are able to get good momentum, which will give you the ability to load your rod, and also gives you a good accuracy. So yep, remember to have this much gap. Now the third, now the third part is holding your line. And this is where a lot of our uh, mistakes can actually happen. Now, I've got this bionic finger, but for those who don't want to use a bionic finger, I use my finger. The way you want to hold your line is simply like this. As you can see, that's in a 90 degree angle. And the advantage of this is that it gives you good accuracy and about time you let go, you just do that. So that's just really easy to do. Now I've seen a lot of people do a lot of mistakes like holding their lines like this. That is an absolute no-no because as you can see, that line can easily slip out and if that happens, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And if you hold it like this, that's just gonna give you a terrible accuracy. So remember, 90 degrees or just get a bionic finger. Of course, when you have when you are um, using this, make sure that the spool is level with the bionic finger so that the casting is not exactly too awkward as you can see here. And of course, tighten your drag. Because if you, if you don't tighten your drag, what happens is that the line will run and that's going to give you a line burn. Or worse, cut your finger. So always make sure to tighten your drag. That way you'll get the distance that is required. Before you start casting though, always do it in a comfortable position and look around your surroundings. Remember, that a flying lit at a high speed is very deadly. So make sure to be very careful, especially if other anglers or people are present. The last thing you need is a bloody disaster. Now for the actual casting, here are the steps to take. As you can see in this demonstration footage, I look around my surroundings before I start my casting, and I stand in a comfortable position so that I don't feel so awkward. Plus, it gives me full confidence that I'm able to cast out far. The next thing I did is I raised both of my arms upwards and I am now in the 3 o'clock position. When I execute the cast, all I had to do was pull with the left hand at the bottom of the rod and push with the right hand at the reel seat. I then let go of the line at the 10 o'clock position and I point the rod at 11 o'clock. The reason why I point my rod at 11 o'clock is that the line will fly off your line like a rainbow. And the last thing I want to do is point my rod down where the line slides against the guides and that will cause resistance. And that will give me a reduced distance. So remember this key elements, 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So that's how you do the cast. And I hope everyone found it straightforward and if not, just watch it again. But now here are the hacks to achieve further distance. For that maximum distance, I spool my reel with braid. Braid has thin diameter yet it's very powerful. And the diameter I recommend for a good distance is around 0.25 millimeters. But I also check the poundage strength so that the braid doesn't snap off too easily under too much pressure. I also recommend using a shock leader as by having that stretch it will help to ease out the cast but also when fishing in an area that has lost a foul, the mono leader can withstand the abrasion. Around two rod lengths of shock leader is ideal for surf casting. For the rigs, I use aerodynamic rigs like the pulley rig or the running ledger rig with the clip-on system. I also keep my bait in the smallish range and I also tie it so it's streamlined so that the bait doesn't cause any drag while flying mid-air. Plus, I like to include a dingle dangle on my bait as well. Also, when you spool your line, make sure that you get your line properly spooled by the machine as this will ensure that you have the line evenly stacked up, which is usually more ideal than self-spooling it yourself. Just don't spool the reel too tightly. 
Now, another key on improving is to practice as much as you can. If you live near a beach or in any area where there is open space, take your rod out and give it a swing so that your body will get used to the casting. Now, for your information, between 70 and 100 meters is more than enough casting distance to cover the ground to get the fish you desire. Also, by having a bit of aid in your casting also helps. So, either the Bowser finger guard or the bionic finger is suitable to help your casting without feeling any pain to your finger. The last thing you want is a sore finger at the end of the day. I hope you all had enjoyed this video and remember that special bonus that is currently going with Bowser. For more information, check out the description and the comment section below and hope you will learn some good tips and tricks on how to cast and how to improve it. Again, thank you for watching and hope to see you all next time and hope you all enjoy my new upcoming videos.